All right, Python on homework time. This week's going to be a little bit different because, um, you know, first up, uh, you can check the newsletter and see what we have. Last week, we did kind of the breaking news recap of the Bluetooth Arise for the Pico W. Um, we'll see how long it's going to take for us to do some stuff with uh, CircuitPython with that. Um, and you can go through and check out all the news stories, testing the performance of SPI based LCD displays and display on CircuitPython all of the news around the web, all of the interviews, all of the videos, all of the things that make this giant community go. But uh, Adafruit was in the latest Hackspace magazine. And Yay. yeah, and I'll get to um, what was in there in just a moment um, because there was also some things about 3D printing. And I've had this on my list to talk about a little bit of 3D printing and open source. So I'm gonna do a twofer. Um, so what we were in, if you, uh, you can download Hackspace, you could subscribe, a couple things. Uh, the Feather RP2040 Parfum 95 Laura was featured in there. Um, I think it got either like a 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10. Got a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Perfect. Yeah. And so this, you know, of course, runs CircuitPython. Um, and then we also got a 10 out of 10 for um, the other stuff that we're And... That's there's kinda... there's two versions, the Laura and the RFM, I think. I guess yeah. the Laura. Yeah, the Laura got 10 out of 10. Or maybe got um yeah, no, no, until we got 10 out of 10. Oh no, sorry, that's the witty pie. Yeah. So I don't I'm know. Thinking. We got one of, either maybe, nine out of ten or ten out of ten. Maybe if they reviewed each one of them, because they're yeah. they look very similar. Yeah. One is, yeah. Anyways, high praise. So um thank you. Um and this is one of the things that of course I saw on hardware ones. But what I want to talk about this week is since on the cover was 3D printing, Prusa. Um, here's the video that just came out and I was tagged on this. This is um, from Tom's 3D. And uh, if you look really close, this, kind of, this video is kind of funny. So the title of the video is Open Source Isn't Sustainable Anymore. And uh, is, he's, in, he's in a church with an open source hardware logo. Okay. Uh, which, by the way... Nice logo! It's based on... <laughs> yeah, so I did the... There's a logo that I designed that was got turned into the OSI logo, this this one. And then someone made an open source hardware logo down the road. So when I see this, I'm like, oh yeah. Um, but anyways, the 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 thing that's happening right now, because this has happened multiple times, I feel like we're in the like the fifth iteration of the matrix, is every few years a 3D printing company is like I don't like this or that, so therefore it's open source. So all these open source printing folks are blaming open source on things. They're saying, oh, there's clones. We don't want to do open source anymore. It's funny, like, what is it, what happened recently that makes it unsustainable? Like, why was it sustainable yeah. until this year? So the the where this is coming from too is um, the, the Prusa folks, tons of open source hardware known for doing open source. I think Prusa has a tattoo of like the open source logo. Well, you don't know, make maybe and, it up yeah. with a sick ass yeah. panther. <laughs> And the uh, the article that came out was the state of open source uh, 3D printing in 2023. And basically, you could go and read the article, but you have to find it in there because this is this is the the thing. They're not releasing the files, so they're not they're not doing open source hardware right now, and that's fine. Please don't. If you don't like it, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, and they want to have a discussion with uh, YouTube personality, journalists, other 3D printing and open source hardware companies. Um, they want to talk to folks. I actually disagree. I don't think they do want to talk to folks because I emailed them. No, they don't. No, they don't. Um, we're, we have the most certified open source hardware. Uh, you, we, you, you've been... YouTube, YouTube personalities though. Yeah, I think we check all the boxes. I'm not worried. This but, is on but we have a very different opinion, which is it's not open source that's messing up your business. It's not. There's other things like people coming in and innovating and making lower cost things with more features. Um, so again, this is a repeat of things that's happened in the past. So I'm just going to send a link to this segment. Just repeat, but it rhymes. Yeah, it repeats. It's, so it is a little so my, my thing, though, is and what I sent to the Prusa folks is, hey, look, cool, don't do open source, whatever. But if you're not going to do open source on the page right now, open, uh, sorry, original Prusa MK4 3D printer, when you when you look at the, the product page, it says open source. And, it was hard. Well, yeah, I mean, like, what does that mean? Okay, and so you should explain what that so means. Slicer was based on something, and they forked it, and now it's like Prusa Slicer. There, the rep wrap was open source, and other people built on it. And I, I just noticed this arrival. It's like, oh, we have a business now, and now we don't want to do open source. I think, I think, look, 
I don't know the detail. I'm not a I'm not a YouTube personality, but I think technically we are. I think that what happens, and this happens, this seems to happen a lot. Again, I'm not privy to the internals of their company, so I could be totally wrong. But I think everything is totally hunky dory. Love open source. Love open source hardware. When things are going up, up, up. We're like borrowing from these designs. We're licensing, you know, we use a license and everything's cool and it's all working out. Um, and we're using this slicer code or we're like this motor driver and everything is cool and you love open source. And then you start to see drops in revenue. And then when you see a drop in revenue, and I know what this is like, you get a little freaky because you're like, ah, like I'm something, I'm losing something. And I think the first thing to go is like, well, I'm, you know, you're looking at who is, ripping you off or cloning or borrowing or whatever and you excel all gets mixed up together and you get angry because you're like i'm doing all this work and all of y'all are just like you're not contributing at all and this happened with um chris anderson this happened yeah with i might have got the i, I might have got the wrong printer but anyways they're not opening source this the the if i got the printer wrong um it's it's the it might be the excel but anyways okay. they're not opening sourcing it they want a new type of license yeah yeah um, I mean, this, I mean, I remember this came up and they're like, there's some other board and somebody was like, you didn't release this board. I, I don't know the details. I, I will say, I don't know the details. I do not keep track of 3d printing, but I think that this, it comes when there's like a little, there's, there's a point in the business where you get really frustrated because somebody is undercutting you. Um, they're taking your work, they're cloning it and they're not contributing. It, and it totally sucks. Like, I don't want to, I'm absolutely not going to say it doesn't suck and like, oh, get thicker skin. It absolutely yeah. blows. And in some way, people's reaction is to close, and that and that's fine. I actually don't like. Yeah. I remember like this happened with MakerBot, and like B was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna close source," and I was like, "Cool, like whatever." Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go through. So, anyways, if if I got the page wrong, the, the thing that I've seen happen is um, the you the word open source is still used over and over after companies say, "Oh, we don't want to do open source anymore because of cloners." Oh, we don't want to do this. And it's kind of the same story in there. Like, there's no protection. It's like, well, there's trademarks, there's patents, there's copyright. Um, there's no such thing as a permanent monopoly on things. You have to continue to do easier to use, lower cost, better quality, more feature things. So um, uh, Thea, uh, who's on the Python she's, Foundation board, and then also on the, also on the open, source hardware, uh, open source hardware board, board wrote a really good article. And um, I sent a note, I'm like, hey, I emailed Prusa because I, I assume they'd want to talk to us because they said they want to talk to people doing open source hardware. Again, I actually don't think they do. I think they're like, oh, we just, come on, everybody, let's discuss. If it's anybody who disagrees with what the article is, which is like, we we want to have a new license. Um, the thing that's hard to, to nail down when people say that is like, what would this license actually protect that already isn't out there, like a patent, trademark, copyright. But here's the thing. Hardware isn't actually protectable anyways. Yeah. Like the licenses so, mean nothing. So it's only your intent. And yeah. for, you know, 50 bucks, I can send any PCB to a reverse engineering board house and say, I want you to like desolder all the components and give me the schematic. And a week later, they send you the schematic. Like this is a very common thing that people yeah. do. And it doesn't matter whether I have and the official schematic. Or the other thing they, is they like, they could start filing off the chain yeah. names, but that's kind of weird. And the other thing, it kind of turns into a Twitter fight and there's sock puppet accounts. People are dunking on each other. Um, you know, there's people who don't think we do open source hardware. They're like, Oh, like lady Ada uses windows. Or she took an elevator that has closed source firmware. Like this is real emails that we've received. Um, and so now to give Arduino credit, they used to have, um, on their, getting started, what is Arduino? They used to say all boards are completely open source, empowering users to build them independently, eventually adapt them to their particular needs. The software too is open source and it's growing through the con uh, co contributions of users worldwide. Okay, they removed that because no. they don't do open source hardware and open source software for everything they do. Correct. That's the right way to do it. They recently Yay. also got funding. So I feel like, and that was my suggestion to Bruce is just like, just be clear what's open source and not. If you don't want to have open source, there's this weird, like, let's come up with a mythical license. Because we kind of had to live through people making up lots of different types of license. Like, oh, like, it'll be open source after we meet our Kickstarter goals. It'll be open source after we're profitable. It'll be open source after five years. Like, no, if you don't want to do open source, don't do open source. Keep it closed and open later. Um, 
and the whole it will be open sourced always is a little yeah and like we're gonna get eventually someone's gonna tag us on this i'm just gonna send this video it's like please don't call it open source it's a little annoying and weird when you continue to call something open source after you've already decided yeah you don't want to do it um but here is kind of a fun uh little travel back in history here here is a quote from you lamar Adafruit founder Lamar Freed doesn't find much value in arguing about who is right in the Clone Wars. Oh, really? There's debate about open source hardware. I'm going to keep shipping open source hardware while you all argue about it. Wait, what's the title of this article? Well, let's see what year it is. Do 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 do. Oh, August twenty fourth, twenty twelve. Like over ten years ago. Ten years ago. Ten years ago. And the title of the article is "Can Open Source Hardware Companies Survive Clones?" And it's about so. This Maker is bot yeah. Printer. So this is the same exact story. Some of the actors have changed. Uh, you know, keep doing Spider-Man movies over and over. Um, but I wanted to just do this one little like, hey, you know, we we understand this. We're not going to get into a Twitter fight and try. I to totally do know. I yeah. by the way, I don't know, and I don't care, and it doesn't matter, and I'm not. And by the way, this is why I don't make 3D printers. This is absolutely not my interest. Yeah. Um, go to town, everybody. But here. And and I and I sympathize with every party, you know, like, and and I even sympathize with people I like guess, um, Naomi who are like, hey, I tried, but none of y'all care. Yeah, like everyone hates Behringer, but you keep buying so, Behringer. I, I guess so. Yeah. To, to summarize my my gripe, because I do have a gripe about this, is okay. You all don't want to do open source hardware anymore. You want to do closer. It's great. Don't blame open source though. You're blaming like these these like clickbait titles open source isn't sustainable anymore yeah it is maybe not for you maybe you don't want to do it but don't don't throw open source under the bus that's not the problem specifically because this keeps coming out with Prusa. that's open source is not Prusa's problem it's not the problem in fact they got here with open source what are they going to do like rewrite every bit of open source software because they don't believe in open source anymore of course not of course not so anyways that's the twofer for this week well uh speaking of open source